Michelle Kunz here from michellekunz.com. That's with one L. Today we're going to be talking about bradycardia, bradycardia from heart blocks. So you know about the study guides, right? This is the zombie notes for bradycardia heart blocks. So I'll be using this to help us go through each of the heart blocks. There are four heart blocks. So those of you who are registered for my class, you know that this heart block zombie notes is in your ACLS study guide. For those of you who are unable to take my class, you can access the zombie notes from my website, michellekunz.com, and it'll actually take you right to amazon.com so you can get any of the study guides if you need. But let's talk about the four heart blocks and look at the P's and the Q's and the intervals be P between the P's and the Q's. Or how I like to say it is, what's the relationship between the P's and the Q's? So the first one that we're going to start with is the first degree heart block. And it does say right on the study guide that the PR interval is prolonged greater than 0 0.20 seconds, but the PR interval will be constant. So now we're going to go to the picture and see if we can find if that exists in our picture that I have posted on my wall. So here is a first degree heart block. Notice that these dark lines will take out a six second strip for us. So we have a six second strip. The first thing I'd like to do is get the patient's heart rate. So if I count the QRS complexes within this six second strip and multiply by 10, I'll have a heart rate, a ventricular heart rate. One, two, three, four, five. Multiply five by 10, I have 50. The ventricular heart rate for this patient is 50. If the heart rate is less than 60, it is considered bradycardia. I will also do the same thing for the atrial rate. I'll count my P waves. One, two, three, four, five. The atrial rate is also 50. So there is the same amount of P's as Q's in the first degree heart block. The important thing about first degree heart block is measuring the P, which comes right off the baseline, to the R wave. So R goes up, R goes down, and then it turns into S and T wave. So if I count the little boxes from here to here, I would love to see that the PR interval is actually five boxes or less. But what we will notice in this rhythm is that the PR interval will be more than five little boxes or greater than 0 0.20 seconds. So if I count the PR interval here, this one looks like an easy one to measure. I have five little boxes in a large box. So one, two, three, four, five. Here's another five little boxes. So that from here to here is 10 little boxes. And I think the R wave starts with one more box there. So this PR interval is 11 boxes wide. That's enormous. So the PR interval is prolonged. And each PR interval is also 11 boxes. So this rhythm is considered a first degree heart block because the PR interval is prolonged and each PR interval is consistently prolonged. That's the first degree heart block. Now remember there will be another video to discuss uh, what this means and how to treat it. We're going to move now to second degree heart block type 1. Here is a second degree type 1. It's also called Mobitz 1. It's also called Winky Bach. Second degree type 1, Mobitz 1, Winky Bach. Three names for this heart block. Now with this heart block, um, I do notice that there are groupings and spaces groupings and dropped beats, dropped QRSs. When we looked at the first degree heart block before, we noticed it was a very regular rhythm. 
this rhythm is obviously not regular. But we still want to count our atrial rate and our ventricular rate. In the first degree heart block, the atrial and ventricular rate were the same. In the rest of the three heart blocks that we'll review, there will be more P's and Q's. So that's helpful to let us know that it is a heart block. So let's count our ventricular rate in the six second strip. One, two, three, four. The ventricular rate is 40. Certainly that is a bradycardia or slow heart rate. The atrial rate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We won't count that one. So the atrial rate is 50. So there's more P's and Q's. Ventricular rate was 40. Atrial rate is 50. More P's and Q's. I know it's a heart block. And then I'm going to look at the relationship be between the P's and the QRS's. And if I take the grouping, I can almost see that the PR interval progressively gets longer. So the PR interval will get longer and longer, and then there will be a P wave without a QRS. So I call that longer, longer, longer drop. What's my name? Winky Bach. So when you have groupings of QRSs and the PR interval may start normal or may actually start long, we could say longer, longer, longer drop. What's my name? Winky Bach. So the PR interval did progressively get longer, longer, and drop to QRS. What's my name? Winky Bach. Second degree, type 1, Mobitz 1, Winky Bach. First degree heart block and secondary type 1 don't usually require major treatments, but we'll be talking about the treatments for these rhythms in another video. So that second degree, type 1, Mobitz 1, Winky Bach. The PR interval will get longer progressively and drop a QRS. Longer, longer, longer drop. What's my name? Winky Bach. So that's two out of four heart blocks. The next rhythm we'll look at is second degree type 2, Mobitz 2. So that was a conclusion of part 1 with first degree heart block and secondary type 1, Winky Bach, Mobitz 1. So now we're going to move on to part 2. So I'll meet you in part 2 video where we're going to look at second degree type 2, Mobitz 2, and third degree heart blocks, and we'll treat symptomatic bradycardia. See you in part 2.